Piggies. 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 Yes. Piggies. I'm just going to call her <laughs> Cynthia, girl. Love you. She has been married for 30 years. Can we get a round of applause? 30 years to the most <laughs> handsome, amazing, true shepherd of the flock. I love, love, love <laughs> your husband, both of you. So adorable. God has a huge call in both of, your, both of your lives. But you've been together for 30 years. You have two daughters. Grandbaby mm-hmm. number five, Cinco, yes. is on the way. Um, yes. And you've done it all as far as serving God. And I love this about you. Everyone, a, a lot, not everyone. It, it, there's a ton of people. I know what my one gift is. And so I'm just going to sit back and wait until I have the opportunity to do the one thing I'd really love to do. And girl, I'm with you. I mean, she's done, <laughs> she's done Sunday school. She's done the youth group. She's done the worship team. She was on the building committee. She's done women's ministry. You know, yes. whatever. Look, just roll up your sleeves and do something Let's while go. you're waiting <laughs> for God to open the door. You know, one of the ones I taught uh, junior high Sunday school at a tiny church that met in a grain hall. My Sunday school classroom was the boiler room. <laughs> no, literally <laughs> the boiler room where we would move out the stuff and I could fit four chairs. Some kids, some weeks I just had one kid because her mom was a piano player. So she was a given. Wow. You know, some weeks maybe I had two or three, but you know mm-hmm. what? I showed up every week. I prepared <laughs> my message. Every- yeah. Oh, are you with me, girl? Come on. Yes. Diligence, faithfulness, showing up. And that's who Cynthia is. And now God has blessed her. She is co-pastor with her husband, Lester, at Kingdom Empowerment. Ministry, John Women's Empowerment University. Did you know that? No. So you're new. We just we're just getting awesome. to know each other. Kingdom Empowerment Ministry joining forces today with Women's Empowerment University. Well, you know what we did yes. with the mission trip. I knew if I put Women's Empowerment University, new men would sign up. <laughs> yes. So, so we we fooled Hector and some other men by putting it under Hispanic International Ministries, which is Hector. Awesome. That's good. On, that was, that clever. was a good move. That was clever. Yeah, we thought of that. We thought <laughs> of that. Okay. Wonderful. She's also, in addition to a woman in ministry, she's also a career woman. She has a master's degree. We got a smart lady in the house. She has a master's degree and she works for a nonprofit uh, empowering yes. people with special abilities yes. to find and keep employment. So with that, would you open us in prayer? Yes, yes. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, that you are watching over us and that you're in the midst of everything that we're doing and we're saying, oh God, that we may give you the glory in all that we do. We thank you, Father, for Donna. We thank you for her ministry. We thank you for her reaching women and men around the world and impacting the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we just pray that your anointing would settle on us, that your glory Sit on us today, God, as we minister to your people, Father. Let everything that we say be with soundness and clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you and praise you now. Amen. Girl, I know you're anointed. Huh? You got up to do this yeah. little women's conference in Guatemala. Power of God. The anointing of God was so strong on you. It was incredible. Tell us a little bit about why you joined us in Guatemala. I want, I want, I'm curious to hear about that. What? What got you? Okay, I um, was with Yolanda Worldwide, and I've been telling her that, okay, when you go, just let me know, and I'll try and fit my schedule and all of this. So um, she, we were gonna, I was supposed to go to to Belize with her, and um, my schedule conflicts because we're going to be in. We had committed last year to another place, but this year. I couldn't go with her to Belize. And she said, well, I'm going to Guatemala. I said, okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And so I said, I'm going to clear my schedule and we're going to go. And so Les and I decided we would go because we felt a pull as well to go to Guatemala because we wanted to, one of the things that I've always told people, um, even when I was in banking, because I did banking for like 11 years, um, I told them they would always ask the question, what would you do if you weren't doing this? And I would always say, I'd be somewhere on the mission field, spreading the gospel. And so I saw it as an opportunity to start um, in that direction. And uh, so that was what 
you know, really got us to Guatemala is the, my desire to really do real, you know, mission work outside of the U.S. I won't say because what we do is not mission work here. It's just, it's different when you're in a, out of the country or third world. Totally country, different. So. Here, mm -hmm. Here's what I made up and you're welcome to borrow it. If it's within the United States, I call it an outreach. Yes. If you leave our shores, then I call it a mission trip. And I, that's just kind of a distinction that I've made. Yeah. And both are equally important. Jesus talked about both, but very, very different. Um, it's interesting because um, most of my people know Yolanda really, really well. She's been in a lot of my classes and, you know, just um, famous, I guess, in, in my circle. And I did a show with her, a, a Facebook Live, and it was called about being so worthy because that was a, a prophetic word that I had given mm -hmm, her. Mm -hmm. And I woke up the day that we were going to do it, and I, I reached out to her, and I said, the Lord, I mean, just impressed on me so strongly that there are three people in your circle of influence that are going to come on this trip, and God is going to transform them in a huge way to transform the world, people who are going to truly have a global impact. And um, a, quite a number of people uh, were influenced by that session with Yolanda. So powerful. But I shared with you and your husband, I really feel that you are two of the people that God wants to use globally, yes. that there's really a global anointing. And um, how did God use that experience in your life of, you know, just stepping up working? I didn't, is, is that the first time you worked with a translator and Yes, <laughs> that was the very first time I ever worked with a translator. And it was very interesting because I had to slow my pace, which um, was a big deal for me because I can, it almost sounds like I'm rapping sometimes when, <laughs> when I start ministering, I have to slow my pace, but it was, it taught me um, to just, to be mindful, more mindful of the individuals in which we're ministering to. And it gave me the opportunity to um, work with a fantastic young woman. Uh, Zinnia was amazing. And it was almost like we were in sync with, like we were yep, one. Yeah, one vessel. And I, one I vessel. enjoyed that. It was powerful. It was so powerful. powerful. And the women resonated with you. You know, your message crosses cultures. And yes. one thing I found, and I know you experienced in Guatemala, women everywhere are the same. Yes. We're all, you know, we've all been through our, our hurts, our stuff, and we all have the same aspirations and desires. And so it was powerful to see the women were just drawn to you mm -hmm. and so resonated and they were just fired up. You got them fired up. So I want you to come and get my people fired up. That's what we want to do today. Incredible, incredible. Yes. And was there, um, what, what do you think, oh, I, because I want to dive into your message, but I also want to feel like, is there like one thing that you took away because you, I mean, you're a busy woman, you have a career, you're a professional. With, you know, surfing. Are you hearing me now? Okay. Say it one more time. Are we back? Yeah. Yes. I don't know if that, yeah, I saw that a little pause there. I said that you're a very busy woman. You are a professional woman. You have a career with a nonprofit. We talked about that. You mm -hmm. co-pastor with your husband. So it's mm -hmm. not like you're sitting home surfing Netflix. I mean, you have a lot going on, but you made this decision. You actually felt, because you're going to challenge our listeners today to arise, and yes. you did it yourself. God said, I want you to arise. I want you to leave the country cross cultures, reach out to people mm -hmm. who don't look like you, don't sound like you, yes. and you discover that, wow, they really resonated with you anyway. And I'm just curious, is there like maybe one big takeaway um, that you are, are kind of carrying with you that maybe you could impart to those who are like thinking, like maybe should I, should I take the leap or not? Yes, there is uh, one big takeaway. I believe it is beneficial for every one who is on the fence and pre really that's primarily what the the message is going to kind of deal with some of that as well okay. is that someone needs you Amen. they need to hear your voice they need to feel you. your hands love they it. need to feel the love of god through you and they need you to take your rightful position in the kingdom of god so that you are in the getting the right place to be Whew. used by god so that was the one thing is that you, we've got to make ourselves uncomfortable for other people so that they can come out of the darkness into where God has called them to be, which is in the marvelous light of Christ. So that was the biggest thing for me is that 
you know, and until you really experience that um, in another place other than your comfort zone, you know, it's wonderful to work in ministry in your church. But until you feel someone else's need who can't do anything else, who can't do anything for you, and they understand that you came out of your comfortable place just to make life happen for them on a different level, you just don't understand it. You'll never understand it. So I encourage everyone to take that leap of faith. First of all, power of God. I, what you just shared is so incredibly powerful, and it's something I never thought of. I've been in missions for 15 years, mm-hmm. and I, I, I regard myself as a missions mobilizer. I think it's one of the call, like a main call of God in my life. And I never saw what you just shared, that they're not going to be there next week to do anything for you. Mm-hmm. And it's like we are so powerful when we're coming from a completely – clean heart, completely clean motives. The Bible Mm -hmm. says that wherever you have selfish ambition or bitter envy, there you have all kinds of demonic chaos. Mm -hmm. I really think you really, you just taught me something powerful and I want to, I'm going to unwrap it for a second. And then I want to hear what more you have to share. And when we're in our local church and we're there, you know, it's like, there's always that temptation for wrong motives to come in. Like, Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe they'll come back next week. Yeah. Maybe they'll make it bigger. You know, we don't want to have mixed motives, but when we're going to be there every week, week after week, and there are, you know, people mm-hmm. in our community, it's just so easy to walk into mixture. But what you just shared, wow. Because I, I wonder if that's why it's so powerful because it really pushes aside those motives of, are they coming back next week? How are they going to yeah. repay me? What if they don't repay me? What if they don't appreciate me? Mm-hmm. Wow, girl. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're not going to be there to, to give you that accolade later. Nope. You've just got to do the will of God while Amen. you're there. Be present and make yourself uncomfortable for someone else. This is really huge because you're getting right back into the back of that pickup truck and taking off down that dusty yeah. road. It's really powerful. Mm-hmm. Well, so you wanted to share, you, you, you gave this message in Guatemala and I, and I want you to bring it to my peeps about the daughters of Deborah and why you, I mean, she's a great lady in the Bible, but why you feel in this hour, it's so significant. And so why does it matter to us that she's a judge? How is that significant? Oh. Deborah, it mattered because in Israel, um, the judge was the person who presided, um, not like we think a judge would preside in our, in our court system. Yes, it does den- denote that as well. But in the, um, not just in the weightier matters, but in the smaller matters, and they were the ruling authority in the land. There was no president. There was the okay. govern. There was the judge to govern the people at the time, and what the judge said is what happened. And so, uh, her being in that position as a woman was powerful in and of itself. Says that you know God chose her. The first, the first thing that we see concerning her is that she is in this position of power. That's our introduction to Deborah. Right. Is she is a prophetess and a judge in Israel. And she's not, she is the wife of Lapidoth. Now, I heard someone say one time, well, a man could have done it. I said, yes, a man could have, but God didn't choose a man at that point because he had chose two men previously. But her being, being a woman was significant because it was showing the people, I use whomever I will. I use men and I use women. I can, I can put my anointing on a woman as well as I can put my anointing on a man. And as we get deeper into it, you'll see what I mean. I'll you be know able to I think it's significant too? I didn't, it, I, I'm like very militant. Mm-hmm. People used to invite me to speak at tea parties and all my illustrations would be like from war movies. <laughs> <laughs> as you have personally experienced. But you know, on these SEAL teams, everyone has two jobs. Mm-hmm. Every member of a SEAL team, has, I knew your husband was in the military, they have two jobs. And I think it's interesting that she's got two jobs. And um, I think if people really look at, at their lives and um, the call of God upon their lives, I think that they'll all see that there, there's always two tracks. 
And we've kind of mm-hmm. balanced. And so she was balancing out how did how does my role as a judge, as a leader of a nation, also balance out with my role as a prophet, whose their job is to press in and to really hear the God with, hear from God with great accuracy. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting. I think one of the reasons why you have a lot of authority. Uh, to bring this message about Daughters of, De- of Deborah is because that's you. You know, you have a secular role in this nonprofit organization, but mm-hmm. then you also have a spiritual role where you really need, I mean, and both you're hearing from God, but I think that we all as women have that. We have like maybe a practical role and we've got to fulfill that. Like mine, practically, I'm a teacher, so I've got to be studying and preparing. But then mm-hmm. I also need to be spiritually in tune so that I can release my prophetic gifting. And I think that that's something that um, I can't say women are better at because I'll get in trouble at it. But <laughs> I think women are, you know, I think that women really do have an incredible ability, um, maybe even more so than men sometimes, to multitask like that. But anyway, um, so so she was a government official and a spiritual yes. leader and, and all of that was combined. So now God comes in, God's positioned her as a woman in authority and he gives her a special assignment. Do you want to talk yes. about that? Her assignment to uh, Barak. I love that she, when she called for him, she sent for him and he came. And when he came, she gave him a word that he already knew. She said, because she called it to his remembrance. It wasn't like God hadn't spoken to him before, but she called the word to his remembrance. And she said, did not the Lord tell you? And then so he goes and he he receives the word from her. Then he says, I'm not going to go unless you go. So sometimes as a woman, our assignment is to help another another individual get to where they need to be. Even when it makes us uncomfortable. Her assignment to him was to help him fulfill his God-given destiny. It was his assignment. It was his assignment to go to war because she wasn't a woman of war. She was a, a governing authority in the land, yes, and she was a prophetess, but her, her role was not military. Her role, she brought a man alongside of her to do the military portion of it, and he understood her authority, though. If I obey this authority, who's telling me now is my time and now is my set season to go in and possess the land, I win the battle. So I don't want you to stay behind, Deborah. I want you to go with me. And so he he not only had, um, he understood what his assignment was, but he was waiting for his moment. I think Barack gets a really bad rap sometimes because, yeah. you know, people say, well, he got, a woman did it. Well, he understood what it was like to be under a governor, under a judge. And yeah. what her role was and what her position was, he respected that. And I think that uh, we miss a lot of that sometimes when we preach this message or uh, teach about this to people is that he, it was a sign of respect as well on his part. But her assignment to him was to birth him out into his destiny. And I think a lot of the times, uh, Donna, I believe that is your assignment is that you birth mm-hmm. a lot more people out into their destiny. You push, mm-hmm. you're that midwife uh, that comes alongside and says, oh, I see what God is doing right there. Uh, and I see you need a little push. And so I believe that uh, that's one of the things that God had assignments on your life as well. And this, Thank sometimes you. that's a thankless place uh, just to, to be that pusher. And I, another thing that you said that I thought was really, really good is, and I want to kind of just pick up on it. You talked about how it wasn't a new word. And I know as someone in the prophetic gifting and just it, people with teaching and any, it, there's so much, I almost pressure, like I have to say something new that's never been said before, or, you know, I, I need to have a new word and a new revelation. And I think sometimes we underestimate the value of reminding, you know, Paul said, you know, I, I don't mind reminding you of stuff that you need to know. And I think maybe that's a gift that pastors have. You know, the pastor's got to get up every week and remind people, look, I I know you guys already know this, (laughs) but I need to remind you. And maybe we underestimate how valuable that is. It used to actually bother me when I would give someone a prophetic word and they'd be like, oh yeah, someone else gave me that prophetic word last week. And I'll be like, I was so (laughs) excited about that prophetic word. And I think that sometimes so I'm going to speak to prophets because I think I draw a lot of them because I am one. Um, don't underestimate the value 
of God mm -hmm. using you to confirm. Because look, we're, how many confirmations do we need? As many I'll as just, many. come on. Can I have another confirmation? 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 So if God just uses you to confirm and affirm and confirm and affirm, that is so valuable. Look, Barack would mm -hmm. still be sitting there. And right. she didn't come along and say, look, I know you already know this. I know God's already told you this, but it's, it's no, you know, it, it still matters. <laughs> it yes. matters. And I'm willing to come and to speak a reminder into your life and say, you know, you know this, I know this, now get up and do something about it, mm -hmm. hallelujah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that especially in the church in the United States, we've heard so many sermons on every topic under the sun, but we need someone like Deborah to come along and say, well, are you going to get up now and do something yes. with it? Absolutely. I love that. It, it, we need someone to come along at different at pivotal points in life to push us into that place. Because what will happen is we get caught up in the waiting game, you know, um, yep. and God is saying, go move, do this is the time. This is the season. And some, and it does take a prophet or to come along sometimes and say, Hey, remember the word of the Lord is it's time for you to go and do and fulfill what he told you to do 10 years ago. What he told you to do five years ago. This is the season. I've got the guys making the resources for you available. He's yeah. opening the door of opportunity for you to do this now. I mean, because it was on my heart to do missions work years ago. And uh, now it's like he opened the door now. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. God, girl. I'm, you know, girl, God. <laughs> girl. I, I left a message for you. And I'm like, apparently God is not going to leave me alone. Because I want to talk about my stuff. That's really mm -hmm. what interests me is me and me and me and me and me. And I want to talk to God <laughs> about me, you know, like, yeah. but no, he wants to talk about you and Lester. So yeah. finally, I'm like, God's not going to leave me alone until I share this. So I reached out to Yolanda and I said, this is because you're under, you know, you're kind of, um, connected with her ministry more than yeah. mine. And I, so I shared it with Yolanda and I'm like, God is not leaving me alone about this couple. This is what he's given me. <laughs> and she's like, Oh, it's accurate. It's accurate. Go deliver it. I'm like, here it comes. Here it comes. But Praise the um, Lord. I, I remember praying over you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you remember what I prayed over you the last night. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. About yeah. being called to shattered women. Yeah. And you have no idea how accurate that is. Tell me why it's so accurate. Um, I just give you a little bit of my own my own testimony. Um, there were things, there were areas of my life that uh, the enemy tried to take me out at a young age. Uh, of so, yeah, because of your so, anointing, mm -hmm. and and it was just one of those things where I experienced a lot of um, trauma. Um, sexual trauma early in my teenage yeah. years. And mm -hmm. it, it didn't stop with uh, once I met Lester because we kind of did things a backwards way, but God is gracious and merciful on that as well. Uh, but while I was pregnant with my uh, first child, uh, the enemy, uh, I was uh, five months pregnant and I was uh, raped at five months pregnant. Um, and so that was, uh, it was, it was really hard. And uh, I remember once I had her, um, you, she would cry more violently than uh, any of the other babies when it was time to change her diaper. Wow. And so as a mother, I would have, I don't know how, what, the Holy Spirit, you know, I would coo her, put her put really close to my face and soothe her and say, it's mommy, I'm going to change your diaper. You're okay. Because it was a violent wow. act at, um, that happened. So I had a lot of things that happened that uh, in my life early that caused me to question who I was, uh, mm -hmm. question um, my place in the world, question my value, my worth as a woman. And um, so the Lord, when, when it came, when he gave me uh, to Lester, I, I, I say, tell people all the time, the Lord used him 
to really heal me and to Amen. bring me from that place of brokenness mm. uh, because I was shattered. Incredible. I was completely shattered um, and I didn't know who I was or, or why I was, but um, I just thank God for uh, the love of Lester. I used to, I know you used to tell Lester, the Lord used you to heal me. He loved me. He showed me what his love was through you. And so it just really healed me. And I know that um, because of all that he's done for me, yeah. that he has not done it just for me, but for Amen. me to touch someone else's life and bring that other woman or that even a young man out of uh, the broken lifestyle into a lifestyle where they can mm. be, be made whole and know that God really loves them in spite of all that has happened to them. I know that God had said, uh, I remember praying over you and the Lord said, you have, you have helped many broken women and God is going to take you to the shattered. And I really think um, God's going to take you to some war torn places uh, where rape has been used as a weapon of war. Mm -hmm. And I think God is going to give you tremendous authority specifically to heal women who've been raped as a weapon of war. And I think that there's a reason why um, God has given you a Deborah anointing because just as you shared, Deborah, Deborah was called to come alongside men who were engaged in war. And I believe that you have that exact anointing um, that you're, that these men who have engaged in war, that you're going to come alongside and God's going to use you in a powerful way. Specifically, I don't know what this is going to look like, how this is all going to impact, but I feel that you specifically have a call, an anointing on your life to heal women, not not women just who've been raped, yes, but women mm -hmm. specifically who've been raped as a weapon of war. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm going to continue to pray that uh, for you and, and just believe that God is going to open up doors, incredible doors of opportunity for you that you never, you never saw coming Glo global, I, I, global doors, because that's not happening in the United States. Right. Um, and you said something, you had sent me your notes. And do you want to say anything more about a mandate? Because you said that she, that she has actually a mandate. And that's a word I've, I've talked about. Um, I, I talked about that a little bit when I did the thing on, on So Worthy with Yolanda. Is there anything more that you wanted to unpack about specifically what it means to actually have a mandate from God and the type of authority that's bundled in on that? Um, when you have, a, for me, uh, my understanding is when you have a mandate from God, it is an assignment that will not let you go. It is, it comes with a great anointing. It comes with yes. a great responsibility. And it also comes with a greater level of sacrifice than the people around you. Uh, they may oh. not be um, called to the kind of sacrifice that God is calling wow. you to. Uh, because of the mandate, because of wh who it's going to set free and how it's going to set them free. Uh, so we have to do that, give that sacrifice that maybe everybody else doesn't have to. You know, Girl, everybody else is eating. Girl, are you using that word in church? <laughs> what? Girl? Yes. I'm stunned. No yes. one uses the S word anymore. Yes. No I wonder know. God gave you to Lester because <laughs> I know what Lester is to do. I know what Lester has to do. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Bold people. That Listen sacrifice. to this woman. She's using mm -hmm. the S word <laughs> with Christians, with cushy, comfortable North American Christians who are never told. They need to, wow, yeah. come on. So did yeah. Deborah have to make a sacrifice because of the Absolutely. mandate on your life? Really? Absolutely. She had to make that. a sacrifice because, you know, she was sitting in, in, in a governmental position. Nice. But I got a big chair. Did you see my new chair? Yes. Woo! <laughs> it looks comfortable. Love and love. Like game time. <laughs> But she was sitting in a governmental position and was governing the people. The people were coming Good. to her. Her sacrifice is now I've got to get up from where I am, where I'm accustomed to people coming to me. Mm. And I've got to get up and go into the battle. I've got to enter into a place where my, my life is not certain. It's not um, as comfortable or as timed as I'm accustomed to it being. But now I've got to get up and I've got to make myself uncomfortable so somebody else can fulfill their God-given destiny. And it is also my mandate to make sure they reach their mandate. 
So I've got to make my, get out of my comfort zone, come out. Deborah had to get off of her governmental seat and enter into the, uh, the battle with Barack. Now, she may not, I don't know if she was actually on the battlefield, but I can tell you if, if she wasn't on that battlefield, she was in a different battlefield in the spirit realm, praying and Amen. interceding for his victory. But she was in close proximity to give him confidence. She you, just you just stole my heart. You just stole my heart. I was already in love with you. Glory. Girl, nobody, nobody preaches like this anymore. Mm. Nobody brings this kind of truth anymore. Mm. And I just am blown away by the power of what you just shared. And I hope people show this woman some love. Can we hit the love button over here? Show this woman some love. And you know what? You, you guys need to hit repeat, 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 repeat over that section. Mm. So many, I'm going to listen to that thing about a hundred times. Wow. <laughs> it was so unbelievably powerful that, you know, he, she had, I mean, she is a picture of, of most of us. You know, we don't yes. have to do anything. You know what? My favorite movie is 13 hours, the secret mm -hmm. soldiers in Benghazi. And there's a line in the movie. It says, none of you have to go but we are the only hope to have. And the, you, you know what? God loves you. You're going to heaven. He's going to give you a space. You know what? God's for you. We, I mean, we cover all of that. And the fact is that you and I, we get to sit in our cushy little chair, yeah. coasting into heaven. Mm -hmm. But wow. If we really want to say, yes, God, give me that mantle. Give me that mandate. Yes. That, that thing that you put me on earth to do, to really mm -hmm. do what matters, to step into that, you're going to have to get up out of your chair. You're yes. going to have to make some sacrifices. You're going to have to go some places you don't want to go. You're going to have to mm -hmm. do some things you don't want to do. And I just did a little mini Facebook live uh, about this because I was kayaking in the Florida swamp, alligator infested swamp, big signs everywhere. Yes, there are alligators here. Don't, you know, don't go swimming. And I had to go kayaking <laughs> in that, in Whoa. that swamp. Why? 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 I mean, I would never willingly do that, but I've signed up to go on a kayaking trip and I'm in training for it. So mm. now it's like, I have to do things that I don't want to do. Things yeah. that I didn't think I could do. Things that are scary. Things that are not comfortable. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I signed up and I said, look, people do not underestimate the power. If you're stuck or you just know that God is calling you to show up in a bigger way. One of the most powerful things you can possibly do is sign up. I mean, sign up for something, <laughs> enlist, whether you want to come with me to minister to the Palestinians. We're partnering with the Arab Daughters of Deborah. Yes. That's who's hosting us, the Arab Daughters of Deborah. These are women who've raised their hand and say, we'll go anywhere in the mm -hmm. Middle East that mm -hmm. God calls us. Our host, the woman who's planning it, Hanan, she's been to Iran. She's been to Iraq. She's been to mm -hmm. Syria. She walked into the middle of the Sudanese civil war. These are the kind of daughters of Deborah that we're mm -hmm. talking about here. And so if you need to sign up for that and come with me to Israel yes. or yeah, whatever, just sign up for something. You know, her and her husband, busy people. They're not sitting around trying to come up with ideas of what to do with their free time. They're running a church. She's got a career. Okay. Yes. But they signed up. And when mm -hmm. they signed up, then I signed her up for more stuff. One of my favorite highlights <laughs> of the trip was what? her husband leading Spanish worship. He's like, I don't speak Spanish, but he's got this Spanish That was hilarious. He's trying, that, was like, that was like a highlight of my trip. Your husband leading that was worship hilarious. in Spanish. It was amazing. And then I, I, I target you, and Mimi's like, you can check out this Cynthia girl. And Hector's like, yeah, we love that. We love that couple's great. So I recruit you to speak at the yes. women's conference, and yes. you're just so anointed. So it's like, it's when you sign up, then you've got to show up. It's like, I yeah. never worked with a translator. I didn't know how to lead worship in, in Spanish. Figure it out. <laughs> you know? You learn. Yeah. You grow. That, that's, how, that's when it becomes an adventure. And so I just want to encourage people, you know, first of all, y'all need to listen to this message over and over and over again. And um, you wanted to share something about Joel because you think God, I mean, this isn't just, yes, God's moving in your life. He's moving in Lester's life, big, huge things. But I mean, 
it's bigger than us, right? It is much bigger than us. Um, the uh, Joel chapter two and verse twenty eight says that he would pour God would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. He some said that flesh. I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. Did mm-hmm. you say some? All flesh. So you said, said a few. So just uh-uh. a few. Everybody. He said all flesh. And when God says all, He means all. In all. Do you know caps. the original Greek? Do you have the original Greek word on that? All? I don't have that one so now. Right but it originally me. means all. The original Greek it's word still, there it means, it means all. all. It still all. means all. Even it Hebrew. Means all. We could look it up in Latin. And, and, <laughs> everybody. It's everybody. People, listen. Get up. Sign up. Do something. Do something. Por favor. Mm-hmm. It's like, we, you know, and that was what was so amazing about this Guatemala trip. Yeah. It's like everybody, we just threw everybody. Yeah, just go, do. Yeah, you're now the Spanish yeah. worship leader. I don't speak Spanish. Okay, we don't care. You're still the Spanish <laughs> worship leader. It's like, it was amazing. Up. It was God's amazing. God's going to do it. God's he said he it. would pour it out on us. And so if he's got a mandate on our life, he is going to give us the power, the authority. And the anointing to go forth and do what he said to do. Just like when Christ called his disciples together, he breathed on them. He gave them power over all demons and all devils and to cure diseases. And they were marveling at that. He said, don't marvel at that. Marvel that your name is written. Mm -hmm. So God is going to pour out his spirit on our sons and our daughters. So that means it's not just a man's job. It's It's the job of the women as well. The church has had a problem with women and a lot of women are sitting down because they're in churches that have a problem with women doing anything other than ushering. But this is the day and this is the hour where God said, I'm pouring out my spirit on all flesh and you've got to get up and obey because there are people waiting for you and you can, you can choose to do it my way or you can choose to do it man's way, but it's better to do it God's way. And he will anoint you and take you on adventures that you have never thought possible, take you into places and have you changing lives like you've never experienced before. His spirit is waiting to be manifested through you that he made that his glory, his glory is to heal. His glory is to deliver. His glory is to set free. His glory is to bring souls into the kingdom. His glory is to raise the dead. We don't like to talk about that one because we haven't seen it in the church like we should. But his glory is to raise the dead. His glory. You've been attending the glory school. You've been attending the glory school. (laughs) Don't you know? (laughs) (laughs) He's powerful. Yes. Oh, this has just been so incredible. And now, you know, the Christian, it makes me sad. Because the Christian life is supposed to be an adventure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes me sad that there are Christians who just really love God and they're really sincere mm-hmm. and they don't even know what's missing. And this is what's missing. And so mm-hmm. can you just call, I mean, my ministry is Women's Empowerment University. So I mean, there are men here, I'm sure. But can you just, from your heart, power of the Holy Spirit, could you just give a call now to the daughters of Deborah to arise yes. and get up and go, just bring it, whatever God, Holy Spirit gives you. Yes. Yes. And this time I want to encourage each and every woman you've been on, if you've been on the fence about what God has for you to do, or if people were going to accept you, or if you were going to have the resources, or if you were going to have the door open for you, I want you to know that it is the time. It is the hour. It is the season for you to get up and to go forth and do what God says do. I encourage you that God is with you. He's not left you. He's not forsaken you. He's right by your side and he's waiting on you to see stand up and believe that he has called you and that he values you and you are more profitable to him moving in the kingdom of God than you are. If you just sit back and be comfortable and and comfortable upon the behalf of other people. But if you would just make yourself uncomfortable for the kingdom of God, God is going to entrust you with more power, with more authority 
because it's authority what you need. Deborah was a woman Amen. of authority and she was a woman of power and she was a woman of wisdom. And it is time now that you share that with the world because God has called you to do so. So I make this clarion call to you to arise and to shine and to let the light of Christ be shown through you and in you so that you can impact the world so that uh, people around you will have to say, did you know, did you, is that the same person? Yeah, that, Amen. That, that's not the same person that we knew five years ago. This is Amen. a new season, a new day. So arise to the glory of God. Amen. What a beautiful call. You know, one of the women who came with us, uh, who I actually fell in love with her too, she mm -hmm. was like, well, I, you know, I really just feel like God wants me to minister to my neighbors. And I'm like, you know what? The, num the best thing you could do to your neighbors is shock them. Get mm -hmm. on an airplane and go to ISIS refugee camps on the border of Syria. Yeah. And they'll be like, whoa, there's, I don't think there's anything you could do that would be more mm -hmm. powerful for your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, than yes. for them to see you get up, go and step into the power the mandate, the authority that God has, because everything that God has for you is waiting for that moment mm -hmm. when you step up and say yes. It's, it's, yes. Like, it's like, it's right there. It's mm -hmm. when you say yes, when you take that step, then God gives you everything you need. God's not yes. going to get it. It's not going to show up, uh, you know, from the Amazon Prime delivery while you're sitting <laughs> in your chair. That's right. It's when you get up and go, that's when everything that you need arrives as mm -hmm. you go. Um, this has been absolutely incredible. Yes. I'm so, I just love what you shared. I can't wait to listen to it over and over again. I want to let those who are, I'm going to come back to you to close in prayer, mm -hmm. but I want to make a couple quick announcements. Um, those of you who are joining us and you didn't hear the beginning, um, it'll be available right here on Facebook in just a couple minutes from the beginning. And I did announce that whoever is the most engaged is going to get a free two video training program from me with my best insights on fasting. And I'm passionate about fasting. I've done a 40 day fast, 21 day fast. I've done countless 10 day fast, seven day, three day. I'm like, a, I love to fast. I, I think it's so powerful and vastly mm -hmm. underestimated. So that's a, like a $17 value. So whoever's the most, and you can go back, replay, comments count. So you can go back to the beginning and add all your comments. And the most engaged person is going to get that class for free. I want to remind you that this week's episode was brought to you by my free ebook, The Secret to Extended Fasting. And you can get that at DonnaParto.com forward slash phases, because in it, I covered the five phases of fasting. And there's one phase I guarantee no one has ever explained to you. I um, want to encourage you, you can still share, click share on this because um, the replay will be up and your family and friends on Facebook will be able to watch the replay as well. I want to let you know that each week I post the replays of this show on my YouTube channel. So you can go to Don, you can click DonnaPorto.com forward slash YouTube and that will be your subscribe button and you'll be automatically reminded each week when I play the replays. If you can handle one more URL, donnaparto.com forward slash show. And you can watch all prior episodes, including the episode that I did on being so worthy with Yolanda Perry, which was incredibly mm -hmm. powerful and popular as well. There's also another one I want to draw your attention to. It was with um, Shannon Hodges, very popular session on what to do with a prophetic word. Be sure to yes. check those out. There's another great one, very popular right now with my business partner, Tamara Aragon, on what to do when life knocks you down. And with that, I just want to challenge, I'm going to go back to my sister to close in prayer, but I want to, I want to challenge you. I want to dare you to do what matters. Yes. God is in the move, on the move. And I pray that this hour has inspired you to get up and make a move to get on board with yes. what God is doing in the world today. Would you close us out in prayer? Yes, Father, we and just I thank love you. you I love you. I love you, and thank you for having me. We no, love I you love very you. much. <laughs> we love you more. Pray. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you and we praise you now, oh God. We glorify your great name. We pray, Father, that your daughters will arise as they view this video and as they watch even on the replay, Father, that your anointing would be upon each and every one of them, that you would bless them to hear with ears to hear you calling and wooing them into that place with you, oh God, that their ears would be attentive to hear your voice speaking to them and they would have the boldness and the courage to come out of the shadows mm -hmm. and into yes. that wealthy place with you, Father, in the mighty 
mighty name of Jesus, we pray now that every yoke would be destroyed, every bondage would be removed in the mighty name of Jesus, that the shackles will be released off of their feet, that they may go free and fulfill their destiny in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the anointing and the authority to do so in Jesus name. Amen. This was a powerful hour. I want to mention one last thing and then we'll finish. Um, if you want to partner with us with the Arab Daughters of Destiny, uh, we're, they're Palestinians, but called to the entire Arab world, go to DonnaFarto.com forward slash Israel and check out our upcoming event. It's disguised. We have to disguise it as a uh, tour, but uh, we believe that God is building a landing strip into the Muslim world in the nation of Jordan. And that's the purpose of this trip is to align ourselves with the Arab daughters of Deborah and to empower them, partner with them in any way that we can to begin to infiltrate mm -hmm. the Muslim world. The time is now, the time is now. Daughters of Deborah arise to that task. Love you. Love you. Bye. Signing off. Bye-bye. <laughs>